Hi, I'm Ryan from Ryan's Comics, and welcome to another uh, video episode of my reviews and everything I like to talk about. First, I'm gonna run down the good, the bad, and the ugly, and talk to you about the things that I think are good, bad, and ugly. The first thing that was good is the brand new news of The Incredible Hulk and what he's gonna be doing for the Marvel Trilogy series of the different phases they're gonna be doing. So first, we've already been through phase one, and they're going into phase two. In phase two, they were introducing Hulk to go to the Planet Hulk. Planet Hulk was an amazing story that came out a few years ago. Hulk is sent to another planet because he's doing too much damage on Earth and them doing that in the movie is going to be really, really interesting because of all these characters that we've never seen before and the alien factor and basically Marvel taking it away from Earth and showing us what is going on outside of the Marvel Universe that we've just seen in the comics. So it's going to be really cool to see Hulk just smashing about. And in Phase 3, they're bringing Hulk back, back to Earth, which they're going to call Planet Hulk. Planet Hulk is by far one of my favorite Hulk series. Hulk comes to Earth and destroys everyone. All the characters, all the Illuminati characters, everyone that came across him, he just flicked him away like flies. Black Bolt himself couldn't stop him. Black Bolt can just whisper and bring down mountains. And the Incredible Hulk just smacks him like it was nobody's business. So it's gonna be very interesting how they take that and what direction they go with that. I can't wait to see Mark Ruffalo go above and beyond what he's, what he's already done. So now we're gonna talk about the bad, Superior Spider-Man. Last week I was talking about how it was the ugly. Well, it's got a little bit notch in my book because after issue two, we finally got to see Peter Parker a lot more. One of the big things that we were all concerned about that there was gonna be no more Peter Parker. I never thought I would say to my life, but there was too much Peter Parker in Superior Spider-Man 2. It was actually really interesting to see that, that his subconscious is still in the book and we still get the personality of the character and we can still get the feel of Amazing Spider-Man even in the Superior Spider-Man. And actually Doc Ock isn't as bad as we thought, as I thought, but it's still kind of creepy to see him wine and dine, Mary Jane and swing around the city, but that's a whole nother story. And then of course, the ugly. This is the, it's probably one of the saddest days for Young Justice fans. Young Justice being canceled on the DC Nation uh, lineup on Cartoon Network. It was, it was one of those shows that there was nothing, to, you, can't, you couldn't compare it to anything as far as what's been out recently. We used to have Batman the Animated Series or Justice League Unlimited. Those were staples for us, you know, our, us adult fans who wanted to watch something that was quality but still animated. And now that Young Justice isn't there, we have nothing to really represent what everybody wants. And they're replacing it with Teen Titans Go, which looks okay. And there's a new, you know, a new Batman series that's coming out. But even looking at the, the early animations, it just doesn't look appealing to me. Of course, I'm gonna give it a chance because they're saying they're already saying that Batman's going to be more in a detective role instead of just wham bam action. So we're gonna be able to see the detective side of Batman, unlike we saw in the Dark Knight trilogy, which uh, recently was in theaters. So I, I'm really excited about that as, as far as that goes. But besides that, it's just a really ugly day for everyone that is a Young Justice fan. So now I'm gonna talk about my picks of the week. First, Superman Hell on Earth. Great series. A lot of it, Hell on Earth's been overlooked by uh, Batman Death in the Family, but it's okay because if you if you like Superman, this is a great time to start reading them. They're, they're bringing the Kryptonian aspect back to Superman, which they haven't done yet uh, when, since the New 52 restarted. So the character's name is Hell, and he came back from Krypton. He, he actually got flown away off Krypton, and he finally made his way back to find where Superman landed, and he's reuniting with him finally to rebuild the Kryptonian legacy. So now, now we're really looking to see how that, where that's gonna go, but basically he's starting to take over the world. Another guy trying to take over the world. Superman doesn't like that. The really cool thing about this, you get to see Superman in a, in a light that we haven't really got to see him yet. He, he's, he's no nonsense. He's not, taking, he's not taking anything for granted right now. Uh, Supergirl's even against him. There's so much deep, deep story and deep background in this Hell on Earth story. The one thing, the other aspect I like about the, the comic right now is they start going in the history of Krypton. And since, since they've done the New 52, they haven't really gone in the history too much. So this is a great opportunity for you fans to get in there and really see how the whole planet was destroyed and what went behind it and what people actually survived and what didn't. Because for me, as a Superman fan, it's pretty funny to me because I always see all these random Kryptonians showing out of nowhere. But now I think they're really focusing on how they left and who, what they were doing and the missions that, were, that they were on and, and why <clears throat> they were even gone in the first place. So definitely check out Superman Hell on Earth. It's a very good title. Uh, the art's very awesome. Scott Liddell writes the book. It's a, it's a good title. Uh, the next one is Luther Strode. Luther Strode has is up here on my list of just straight violence. I want to see if I want to see something violent and people just get torn up. I'm reading Luther Strode. The current story is called Legend of Luther Strode. The first story was The Strange Talents of Luther Strode. In The Strange Talents of Luther Strode, you got to really see how he became who he is. He basically is just a kid who read a book, said, hey, I'm gonna read this book about Hercules. Reads the book and actually becomes one of the strongest men on earth. Impenetrable bullets, very healing fast, doing all these crazy things. 
But the thing is, any one of us could read the book, but it's just one of those books that no one reads, so <laughs> you never know You never know what, what's gonna happen. So it's a really good book. You get to meet all these characters that have the same power, and it's really cool, but it's very violent, and the art just matches the story so well. I wouldn't ask for any other artist. It's very graphic, so if you're into the violent and you just wanna see some guys get the bus kicked, it's a very good book to check out. Now, for full content of just all awesomeness, I'm definitely gonna recommend Fables. Fables has been coming out for years now. It's on issue 120 something. It's such a good book. If you haven't been into Fables, I'm gonna let you know now. Fables is my top three stories of all time. It, the depth behind it is just so, so intense. Basically, the, the Fable characters are all the characters that we grew up with. All the Disney characters, Cinderella, Snow White, Beast, the Three Little Pigs, Mowgli, all the characters you could ever think of that were in, there, in our Disney lore as growing up, they're all in this story. And they're in 2008 New York and they're just trying to survive because they got kicked out of their own town, their own fable land by an unknown source. I don't want to give it away because when they reveal that, when they reveal the, the real bad guy, it's just going to blow your mind on how we took over. And if you haven't been on Fables, it's very, 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 very good. So I really think if you want to get into something that isn't just so flashy and violent and da 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 da, then you can definitely get into Fables because it has, it's the full package. Okay, now I'm going to go into the nerd news of the week. J.J. Abrams directing Star Wars Episode 7. It's unbelievable. He's a great director. And I know you guys keep talking about the lens flare. Let's get over it. You know he's not going to do that. He's definitely going to work hard to make sure that this film sees its own light. But for me personally, I feel like there's too much power for one man. I don't know to love him or to hate him. Because right, you got one side, you got Star Trek, and you got Star Wars. That's two completely different cultures. Personally, I'm a Star Wars guy, but that's just me. I know that Star Trek fans are a little conflicted. Should we go see the new Star Wars movie because our favorite new favorite director is directing it? What is he going to bring to the table? We're all wondering this. So it's going to be really story driven, obviously, and I really am very, very excited, just probably as much as you are, to see the movie in action. But I'm just very, very, very concerned that they're giving too much power to one guy and that his, his, his visuals and his image of how it should look may cross over Star Trek too much. But I want to know what you guys think. You know, comment below. I really want to talk about this with other people and see what they think about it. All right, so the next thing. This week, Sunday, Walking Dead season premiere starts all over again. 3.5. Let's go. I'm a Walking Dead fan. I'm loving the season right now. So come down to the shop. We're going to be viewing it every Sunday for the whole season. 6 p.m. We're going to be watching it here. I'm going to have free popcorn for you guys. Come down. Come enjoy it. Come get part of the nerd culture and check out Walking Dead with all of us, with your, with your fellow Walking Dead fans. You know, Daryl's coming back. We left off with Daryl about to be killed. We don't know what's gonna happen. So come on down to the, you know, Ryan's comments and check us out for that. And then the last thing, Iron Man 3 finally got announced for May 3rd. It's gonna be a great day. It's gonna be a great weekend. That same weekend is free comic book day. So we're gonna be at the movie theater handing out comics to everyone that shows up for the midnight release. And that weekend alone, we were gonna be, we're gonna have the biggest event of the year, which is called Free Comic Book Day. And we're gonna go into that later. And for you guys who know, you should be getting excited because if you've been here before, you know we like to party here. So I'm just letting you know, if you want to get down on some free comics, when Iron Man comes out, go down to uh, your local Temecula Theater and check it out. Thank you for tuning in again. This is Ryan, of course, from Ryan's Comics. If you like the shirt that I was wearing today, it's a new Walking Dead American Flag shirt. We got it in stock as always. You know, uh, if you have any comments or questions or anything, or, or you want me to talk about something in particular, you know, leave a comment below. That's, that's the place to do it. Um, I always check it. I love the feedback. People are already coming in the store and telling me what they liked and what they wanted to see. And, you know, it's definitely reflected uh, here personally at the, at the shop. So if you have anything like that, just come on down. And, you know, ryanscomics.com if you want to see what's coming out in the shop. We update it every week to see what's coming out new. Click the new this week link and you can see what's coming out and uh, everything else is good. So come on down and I can't wait to see you.